Hey everyone, so I just saw an article written by Alyssa Mercante and published on Kotaku, which of course everyone knows is the uh, trash tanker of news on planet Earth. This was published about a week ago on April 19th, and the title is Hades 2 is the kind of hot we need right now. And this is such a muddled and disingenuous uh, article, and I, I thought that Alyssa Mercante was a mediocre hack before, but just reading this... It, it just shows how small-minded this person is and how obsessed she is with, with coming across as this sort of giant of satire or, or cultural commentary. And she's such a small-minded idiot. So without further ado, I just want to jump in here. But, I mean, you know, th this person is basically doing this to, to, to raise her profile, you know, publish trollish trash. And, uh, you know, when people respond, she'll, she'll build a, a name or a reputation for herself. But... Some of these things, you know, they're just so foolish that they require a bit of response. And and this is one of those uh, this is one of those articles. So it starts Hades Supergiant Games award-winning 2020 roguelite was renowned for its excellent combat, beautiful art style, trancing music and very very hot characters. Okay. I mean, this is somebody who was complaining about sexy characters not just a month ago in Stellar Blade. And now we're now we're going to pretend that we've We've, we're, we're all for hot characters and all the rest of it. I mean, this is the kind of internal dishonesty uh, that you would expect from a person like this. But in any case, you'd expect a game about Greek gods who were purposefully attractive so that the normies of ancient Greece had something to aspire towards. By the way, Alyssa Mercante is the patron saint of normies. I mean, this is a brainwashed slave. She, she has no capacity to independently perceive and penetrate the culture that she lives in. She's just a slave to it. She's just a slave to it. She's a slave to all the memes to all the belief. If you ask Alyssa Mercante about any issue in the culture, any issue whatsoever, I could basically predict the response she'll give you. She is the patron saint of normies, Alyssa Mercante is. She's there with her with her, you know, with her with her uh, fuck you daddy hairstyle and the pink dye and all the rest of it. It's it's just the patron saint of normies in 2024. Okay, Hades managed to exceed expectations, and from what we've seen of the Hades 2 technical test and Supergiant's latest gameplay stream, it looks like the sequel will be even hotter. Take that, cancel pigs. Okay, now, Alyssa Mercante, as everybody knows, is a cancel pig and a former cam girl. And I didn't realize that this person was a former cam girl, but it appears to be the case. No, I, haven't in I have not independently verified that for myself, nor do I want to, okay? If somebody else wants to do that, you're free to do so. Leave a comment if uh, if you if you find her stream or whatever, and uh, to to verify that it exists. I have not done so, and I, the the reason I bring that up will be made clear soon enough. But I've noticed a couple of people uh, saying that she was a failed cam girl. Guys, you can't fail at being a cam girl. Okay, I mean, being a cam girl is really kind of failing. When you stop being a cam girl, that isn't failing. So, um. She's a, she's a successful cam girl, I suppose. She, she did it for a while, then she stopped. God bless that decision, right? It's called growth. And of course, that growth is from cam girl to journalist at Kotaku. Uh, so really the cream of society, I would argue. And that's the reason that she has every right to look down upon you male gamers. Uh, her CV includes such distinguished positions as cam girl and journalist at Kotaku. Okay, um, as, as, for the, as for the cancel pig, you know, uh, this is a person who was trying to cancel Stellar Blade, who was trying to cancel the Steam Curator guy, Cabrutus, who's trying to cancel the, you know, male beauty standards in games and all the rest of it. This is a cancel pig. Um, and, and she thinks if she writes an article, sort of recreationally, appreciating the hotness of characters in another game, she can co-op the commentary of cancel pig and you know it's it's this is just the brainless satire of a, of, a, of an early 20 something so despite what certain corners of the internet might believe there isn't a lack of attractive people in modern video games Baldur's Gate 3 was uh, full of hotties she says I actually didn't think so I thought Baldur's Gate actually the characters were quite ugly um, I thought the character creator was very really subpar actually I think Baldur's Gate 3 is um, is uh, is overrated that's what i think i think Baldur's gate 3 is actually quite overrated but when compared to something like stellar blades eve the standard bearer for the latest game or culture war the manner well, who made it a culture war by the by the way like who made who made this a culture war like who fired on fort sumter right it, it was not the kids that just want to play games with hot girls in them 
you people made it a culture war. And when people fight back, you act like they're wrong to do so, and of course they're not wrong to do so. The manner in which Hades depicts its characters and their attractiveness is fundamental different. Okay, so this is an inter this is this is the reason this this article comes across as so utterly mediocre and small-minded. When I read this article the first time, you know what it, it reminded me of? It reminded me of the first Council of Nicaea. That was the first. That was the thing that came to my mind, in which a bunch of bishops in early, uh, in late classical, early medieval Europe, were arguing about the divine nature of Christ, and. You know, you have you have all these scholars arguing about whether uh, arguing about the divine nature of Christ and trying to come to a conclusion about what the Bible means. And here, who, here you have a normie hack whose personality reflects only a rebellion against Daddy, trying to make these subtle discriminations and distinctions between attractiveness and hotness for a video game website, one of the trash video games websites actually, and and one wonders why. Why? Why are you going? Why are you pouring so much effort into distinguishing like what makes something attractive in a video game for a trash tanker website? So Hades' character sexiness is woven into their personalities as much a part of them as their wants, needs, emotions, and their bodies. However, scantily clad or salacious, are not in motion. They cannot be manipulated or posed or peered at from different angles. What? Instead, it's like you're looking at statues or paintings of these gods in their eternal, infinite sexiness. There's desire here, sure. But there's also power and reclamation. There's longing. Because, like, this is such hackish writing. This is such hackish writing. The concept of look but don't touch is incredibly sexy. It's part of why strip clubs, many of which have strict rules on touching the performers, are so lucrative. Okay, but what's what's the difference between that and Stellar Blade, Alyssa? It's not like the gamers can touch. What do you mean? Like, you're saying strip clubs are okay, but Stellar Blade isn't? And remember, you were a cam girl. What, what what are you what are you talking about? What are you talking about for, for Hades too? Like um, statues or paintings in their eternal infinite sexiness? What what does a cam girl do? They take their clothes off and pose for a bunch of men on the interwebs. And she's gonna call the main character in Stellar Blade a sex doll. But I mean, what is a cam girl but a sex doll? So there's something going on here. If you, if you want my opinion, there's something going on here. Conversely, a character like Starblade's Eve is hot, but she doesn't seem to be aware of it. She's sexy, but doesn't know it. Okay, but who cares? This is like this is why I bring this up, like the Council of Nicaea. What happens if you if you're right about all of these distinctions you're making? It doesn't matter. The fact is that somebody else out there in the world thinks it's sexy. Do you understand that? I, I'm not sure that you do. These are the same people that talk endlessly about diversity, right? Having a diverse uh, standard for attraction, right? diverse body standards and all the rest of it and then look what happens when something like stellar blade comes out and there's a female protagonist that a lot of men find sexy she doesn't like it and this is what this is really what highlights what's always been the case this is not about diversity it's not about tolerance it's basically about attacking the male sexuality really because all of the diversity is supporting female sexual diversity so in other words you're still attractiveness if you're fat but if, if somebody makes a game in which we have a, an overtly sexualized and over-the-top kind of depiction of a sexualized female character, uh, the rules of diversity apparently no longer apply. And she'll actually comment on this um, later in the uh, in the article. Um, okay, hang on. Let me just if I can find it here. Yeah, she says, Hades 2 includes all different kinds of hot. Like Baldur's Gate 3, there's a variety of sexiness on display here from the... From the burly bareness of Hephaestus, whose presence here suggests a more inclusive approach to body types than seen in the first game. Right, so so we're talk so here we are talking about inclusion, right? To the muscle mumminess of he he Hecate and Nemesis. There is a smorgasbord of sexiness on display, not a singular, decidedly straight male oriented take on attractiveness. Right, but there's only one protagonist in Stellar Blade Alyssa. There isn't like a cast of characters in the same way as a, as like an RPG, where you where you can actually create and customize your own character. And here's the thing that I'm not I, I don't think you're understanding about diversity. Diversity doesn't mean that like each game is about everything. Each game has a smorgasbord of literally everything under the sun. Diversity means that we're all able to enjoy different things. 
Not every game has to be a smorgasbord because when you make every game the smorgasbord you're proposing, you actually lose diversity. There's no longer any diversity. Every game is a cookie cutter smorgasbord. That's not diversity. So this is a this is a tremendously confused and and mediocre article. Um, and it just blows my mind. It blows my mind that of all people, a former cam girl would complain about men finding a sex doll attractive in a game. Is she a sex doll? Well, no, not really. But even if she were, what's the problem? So men find that attractive. Just let it be.